Hi, welcome to Pathology Riddles. Today, we have brought classical images of granulomas. As granulomas are some favorite spotted questions both in undergraduate as well as postgraduate exams, I'm sure these images will help you to pick them up in seconds and you will not get it wrong. So let's jump right in. The first image, can you recognize, if you are a postgraduate, can you recognize which organ is this? So on top, the light layer that you can see is that of a lymph node capsule. Underneath, you can see blue blue portions. This is a scanner view, so that's why you are seeing it so minute and a larger area can be seen. You can see all these blue blue portions. These are lymphoid follicles. So in between these lymphoid tissue, there are lighter areas. And what are these lighter areas? These are basically granulomas with central necrosis. Now, as you become more experienced, you will be able to pick up these granulomas on scanner view. So right now, if you know that these are granulomas it's enough we'll see a higher power of the same you will understand it better then let's see so here we have this left side image and that on the right so what does the left image show you it shows you a typical image of caseous necrosis so how do you define that or how does it appear in hematoxyl and eosin stain sections? They appear structureless. You will not be able to see it in a particular configuration. There will be, they will be structureless. They will be amorphous. They will be bright pink, eosinophilic. And they will have that granular appearance. If you can see where the laser is pointing, that is the granular appearance. And you will see a lot of debris. These are those pycnotic nucleus, cardiolysis of the nucleus that happens in necrosis. You know that the nucleus undergoes pycnosis, that is condensation, cardiolysis, breakdown, and cardiorexis, that is the dissolving of the nucleus. So these nucleus are in various phases of those process that the nucleus undergoes in necrosis. So this is how caseous necrosis looks. That is structureless, amorphous, eosinophilic, granular debris. And on the right, we see a classical image of granuloma. And you see this most commonly in tuberculosis. So what do you see? In the center, we are seeing a Langhans giant cell. Langhans giant cell are nothing but around 40 to 50 macrophages, they come together. And that's why you see multiple nuclei in a single cell with a lot of cytoplasm. So these are macrophages coming together. And this is Langhans type of giant cell usually seen in tuberculosis. And surrounding that, you can see some structureless area that is a little necrosis is there over here. And followed by all these light staining elongated cells, these are nothing but activated macrophages. These assume the shape of epithelial cells. So they are called as epithelioid cells. That is, they have abundant cytoplasm and the nucleus appears slipper shaped. Slipper shaped is if you see behind the, your footwear, the particular shape that is there, that is broad above and narrow below, is how this nucleus look like. So they are slipper shaped nucleus. Surrounding this, we get this rim of lymphocytes and there are few plasma cells which are interspersed. If they look dot-like in histopathology, they are lymphocytes and if they have some pinkish cytoplasm, those are plasma cells. So this is how a typical granuloma looks like. You know there are two kinds of granulomas, that is immune granulomas and then there are foreign body granulomas. And one more thing to remember is usually in infectious process, you will get all this necrosis in the center, but there are non-caseating granulomas and that you can see in Crohn's disease and sarcoidosis and many other conditions. So what is granuloma? Granuloma is a kind of chronic inflammation 
and it is characterized by a collection of epithelioid macrophages that is the activated macrophages and surrounded by most often by lymphocytes those are T lymphocytes and sometimes associated with necrosis so it's a process in which the body is trying to contain that infection when it cannot eradicate it or eliminate it especially tuberculosis the most common that we get in india so let's go to the next slide in this slide what do you see this is a cytology image of granuloma so i got this corresponding case so i thought why not share it and what you see here is those elongated cells which are transparent or you can see through them these are those epithelioid macrophages or epithelioid cells they are slipper shaped these are the nucleus and since the cytoplasm is indistinct with indistinct borders you can't really make out that here the cell ends and then the other cell begins you will see all of them are present in a pinkish background and here you will see lymphocytes as well as plasma cells the same thing those small small dots with very little cytoplasm is that of lymphocytes more abundant cytoplasm is that of plasma cells and since this is a lymphoid tissue on the background also we'll see different lymphoid cells so we also have one image of giant cells so when the macrophages come together they form this giant cells and that's why you have more nucleus and when they become activated they elongate and they look like epithelioid cells so that's about this tutorial i hope you have understood granulomas and i'm sure you will be able to recall it whenever you get an exporter so that's all for today this is dr susan signing out until we meet in the next video